Tuning back in, this is local sports. Our batter is setting up at the plate. Three men on base, zero, zero count, two outs. This could be the last at bat of the inning. The man up, Drew Skoletsky, 5'5", 180 pounds. Pitch, strike, zero, one count. Pitch, hit, batter runs, man on first misses. He keeps going, he throws, man on second misses. He keeps going, oh, it's coming home. Get out the rye bread and mustard, Grandma. It is grand salami time. As those of you who are invested in Seattle sports may know, that is the famous cheer of Dave Niehaus, the longtime Mariners radio broadcaster. We will not be talking about his team today, no. We will be talking about what comes before. Some baseball teams are good, but this one isn't. Tonight, live, is the story of the Seattle Pilots, the one-year baseball team. Like me, only getting a grand slam because the fielders were inept, this is a team almost equally inept at baseball. Tonight, we'll be talking about the lead up, the swing, and the follow through of the pilot's solitary season in the seaside city on the Sound. As you all may know, baseball is old, very old. And the most important part is swinging to hit the baseball. But the swing is more than just the collision, the attack, Wind up and follow through are all equally important parts to understanding the baseball swing. As Kurt Schaefer said in his Summer 2000 article about the pilots, until 1957, Major League Baseball only went as far as St. Louis, so the PCL was the only show in town. The PCL, or Pacific Coast League, was a West Coast baseball league in the, night, in the early 1900s. In 1932, the Seattle PCL Stadium burned to the ground. This was probably arson. This forced the Seattle team to move to a stopgap and then move to a stadium which would be known as Six Stadium, named for the brewer who would go to bail the team out of their financial woes. They would play at Six Stadium and they would be very successful until 1957, where two teams moved to the West Coast in the American League, and that bankrupted the PCL. Now, Seattle was left without a big draw baseball team, so they began to lobby the MLB to gain their franchise. During the 1957 World Series, a meeting was made between local politicians and the MLB owners to give the Royals a franchise. In order for the American League to be balanced, they would need a 12th team, and that became Seattle's franchise. This team was set to play at Six Stadium, which had proved to be a terrible home. The nearly 30-year-old stadium had problems with leaky sewage, bad water pressure, and they had to ship in a battalion of porta potties to fill up the bathroom capacity. Talk about sick. The team would be miserable, finishing last place in the American League Western Division. Additionally, with limited fan support and running out of money, again, something would have to change. That change came in 1959, when during the World Series, Bud Selig of Milwaukee sent a $13.1 million offer to purchase the team. The American League owners were tempted, but the state of Washington threatened antitrust legislation to keep the team in the city. Additionally, the new Seattle baseball stadium, which was supposed to be finished the next year, had been barely even started. The deal was about to be finalized, but the mayor of King County and a local attorney teamed up to sue the AL and its creditors over investment protection. But to both their dismays, the team would end up being sold to Seelig. Local townspeople didn't even want the team. As the judge presiding over the case stated, I pass people on the street who say, take the bloody ball club away. We don't want the damn thing. The team would be sold and would end up being known under a more familiar name, the Milwaukee Brewers. Seattle did end up retaining a deal to later land the Seahawks and the Mariners in the 70s. Baseball is a strange and arbitrary game. And ultimately, the swing of a single bat is fleeting compared to the length of a single game. Along this line, a single season is fleeting compared to the length of the sport's history. But like in a single season, a single season can be remembered. The, like in a baseball swing, the lead up, follow through, and attack are equally important parts to understand. 
the lead up and follow through are much more important to understand in the baseball swing than the swing itself. And that proves true for the season as well. The wind up and follow through of the Seattle Pilots are way more interesting than the one season of pathetic baseball. Before I researched this speech, the Pilots were just a footnote in the longer and more interesting story of the Seattle Mariners, my favorite baseball team, and the fantastic multi-hour YouTube documentary series by John Boyce and Alex Rubenstein that introduced me to the team, the pilot story was over before the 10 minute mark, but now I have learned to appreciate the implications of some bad baseball. Like an inside the park grand slam, a single season is a flash in the pan, but it can be remembered just like I and many others remember the pilots.